Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending today's ceremony. I'm Zaina Jabril, proud principal here at Dearborn High School, and I'd like to welcome all of you as we gather to honor our service members and remember the sacrifices they have made for our country. We're here today to honor our heroes and remember their achievements, their courage, their dedication, and to say thank you for their sacrifices. Memorial Day was called Decoration Day. It originated when grieving families began decorating the graves of their lost soldiers with flowers and wreaths. These informal honors led to the first formal Memorial Day observance on May 5, 1866. Congress officially recognized Memorial Day as a federal holiday in 1887. And that's why all of you will have Monday off next week to uh, memorialize our veterans. Today, many Americans go to cemeteries on Memorial Day to decorate the graves and honor the brave men and women who gave their lives for our country. Your presence here today and all such gatherings across the country is a tribute to those who served our country. To begin the ceremony, I'd like to welcome to the podium 12th grader, who's also a member of our women's ensemble, Nadia Gilani, to lead us with the national anthem. Everyone, please rise. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Nadia. Nadia is gifted with a beautiful voice. Now I'd like to welcome to the podium our MC for the morning, 12th grader, Sarah Mornilla. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today as we remember and honor those who have risked their lives in the service of our nation. One of these brave men is retired Admiral Robert Natter. A native of Trustville, Alabama, Retired Admiral Robert J. Natter grew up in a family with a profound commitment to military service. All six of his brothers served in uniform, while his two sisters married servicemen. He enlisted in the Naval Reserve at age 17. After one year of enlisted service, he was appointed to the United States Naval Academy and graduated in 1967. Natter eventually rose to four-star admiral, the highest rank in the U.S. military. Admiral Natter saw continuous duty in operations in the rivers and coastal waters off of Vietnam. After three years, he became officer in charge of a SEAL boat support detachment in the lower Mekong Delta. Three months in, the small craft was caught in a Viet Cong ambush and all aboard were killed or wounded. 
Seriously injured, Admiral Natter swam ashore and then back with one other crewman, directing suppressing fire to bring the damaged boat through a hail of enemy fire. For that action, he was awarded the Silver Star and Purple Heart Medals. In 2003, Admiral Natter completed a distinguished 41-year Navy career as a commander of the U.S. Atlantic Fleet, the first commander of U.S. Fleet Forces Command, the first commander of all U.S. Navy and Coast Guard Homeland Defense Forces, and the commander-in-chief of the NATO Western Atlantic Command. Now please join me as we listen to a message from Admiral Robert Natter. Hello, I'm Admiral Bob Natter, retired. Uh, I met uh, John Foster and his wife Jody about a year ago. I know that he's a social studies uh, professor at your high school, and I was so impressed with him and his wife and their dedication to the uh, education of our folks today, especially our young people and how they fit into the uh, fabric of this country and the importance they're going to play in the future and their importance in understanding the social studies curriculum. Uh, John asked me to speak today a little bit with you all about uh, a little bit about my background and also the importance of Memorial Day, what it means to me. First of all, my background, I'm from Alabama. I'm one of nine children. My parents never went to college. Uh, I enlisted in the Navy when I was 17 years old, ultimately went to the Naval Academy and served in the Navy for a total of 41 years, uh, retiring as a four-star admiral. So I went from the lowest seaman recruit to the highest rank in the Navy, primarily because of the opportunity that this country provided me, not only in education, but opportunity to serve with some of the finest young citizens of this country. Let me tell you why uh, Memorial Day is so important to me. Um, I served in combat in Vietnam for a year and a half. My last tour there lasted about five months. Uh, I was officer in charge as a lieutenant of a special warfare boat detachment. We deployed to Vietnam uh, in 1970 with uh, 10 of us. Uh, I was the only officer. We had uh, mostly young people uh, who had been in the Navy for a year or more and they ranged in ages from 18 to 40. Uh, and I think I was the second oldest in the group. We deployed there with one SEAL platoon and uh, served with another SEAL platoon while we were there. So uh, one evening on an operation, uh, we went out uh, actually and uh, get, were ambushed, uh, wounding one of our people. The next day we went out for another operation um, and in the morning, we were ambushed coming out. We got into a firefight, uh, hit with three RPGs in our small boat, had a total of uh, seven SEALs and uh, three boat unit folks. Um, we were blown into the water. One person was killed right away. Two others were killed by rifle fire while we were swimming in the river. Uh, two of us actually swam back to the boat. Uh, one of which was myself, and the other was a young African-American by the name of Johnny Williams, who had never swam before in his life, before going into the training with me, uh, preparatory for our going to Vietnam. Johnny and I got back into the boat and were able to uh, uh, fire uh, and suppress the enemy such that uh, the rest of the folks were able to get out alive. Uh, Johnny Williams is one of my great heroes in life. He uh, actually, uh, he and I stay close today. We visited together uh, and we remember very fondly the great people we had the honor of working with in Vietnam. And of course, we uh, shed a few tears here and there about some of the people we lost. But what this means to me, Memorial Day, is an opportunity to get together uh, with old friends and those who've served together to know that not only is this country a great country of opportunity, but it's also a great country where we can get together and serve with one another in support of this great country of ours. Uh, I would only offer to each and every one of you uh, to consider going into the military. It is a great means of opportunity. We're in the greatest country in the world. And the best way to appreciate that fully is to travel like I had the opportunity to travel all around the world. 
and to know that this is truly the best country of opportunity that we have. Uh, so with that, let me just close and say happy Memorial Day. Thank you and thank your school for remembering it with so many veterans who uh, know it and remember it in such a personal way. So again, I'm sorry I'm not there in person. I wish I were so I could take some questions. But uh, with that, thank you and goodbye. Thank you for your words, Admiral Natter. Next up, we have our keynote speaker this morning, the mayor of the city of Dearborn, Mayor Abdullah Hamoud. Good morning. Oof, not a single. Okay, we'll try that one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. You know, I, I would say that that's more than likely the keynote. Uh, you know, the, the first-hand perspective of an individual who was selfless, uh, who, who... Is that my cue? Um, of an individual who can speak to uh, what life was like in battle and the sacrifices that were made by uh, our country, men and women surrounding that individual. What I wanted to speak of is, you know, growing up as a Durbanite, as somebody born and raised in this city, this idea of something greater than myself was instilled in me at an age not too different than kind of how old you are right now. Sitting in the auditorium, sitting in the classroom, my teachers always told me to aspire to not only want success or greatness for myself, but to want to transform that greatness or that, that whatever you want to be, whatever you desire to be in your life, but to ensure that whatever you do, you do for the betterment of the whole community. Because there's this understanding here in Dearborn that, you know, we're the seventh largest city, but we're the small town feel. And we know that if we uplift one another, there's nothing that we cannot accomplish. And on this Memorial Day, who we recognize are those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Those men and women who were brave enough, who were sent out, who defended our nation and the values and ideals that we all stand for, who afforded us the opportunity to sit in this room for me to stand behind this podium with this microphone to speak to you today, um, with whose, without whose sacrifice I would not be able to do so. That's who we remember on this day in Memorial Day. You know, most of you may know or some of you may not, but if you go in front of our Henry Ford Centennial Library, we actually have a veterans memorial. And if you go to that memorial, you'll see the names of many of those Dearborn-ites uh, who served uh, in our military proudly and who we want to remember not only one day of the year but each and every single day because the freedoms that are afforded to us are not freedoms that we only have on Memorial Day and that we, that we pause for just this moment in time but they're freedoms that I hope that we carry with us each and every single day and it feeds into that idea once again that whatever I do I want to do for more than just myself that I want to do for the betterment of my community. That's what I've learned. That's what I've taken away in my conversations uh, with all of our servicemen and women. Uh, and that's to, what to me is, is the importance of Memorial Day itself, uh, this commitment of something greater than, than yourself. Um, and so with that, um, you know, we remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And we also thank those families um, who, who were willing to share their loved ones uh, with our nation to ensure that our preservation of our rights and our freedoms and our values were upheld. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Hamoud. I would like to now welcome our district superintendent, Dr. Glenn Maliko to the podium. Uh, good morning, everyone. Student staff, honored guests. I uh, want to thank the mayor for um, being here as we honor um, those that paid the act ultimate sacrifice uh, during this Memorial Day uh, week. We're going to have a parade, we know, again on Monday and look forward to being part of it. I know we have Councilman Paris here and Councilman al Sawafi, so we appreciate the partnership with the city. And we have from the Board of Trustees, uh, Trustee Thorpe, Trustee Petlichkoff and Trustee Berry, and we appreciate their leadership in the district. And we have Ms. Fatmi Faraj on executive cabinet who oversees the Dearborn High feeder track. So I wanna recognize them. 
you know, after the past two years, it's really not uncommon to hear people talk about those things, really, that they took for granted, and now how much they appreciate all they have. I just mentioned, you know, the parade. It seems that we are all taking a little bit more time these days to appreciate what we have, a deeper pre appreciation for things like spending time with friends, family, going to our favorite event, or simply being able to do what we weren't able to do for quite a long time. Memorial Day is also about appreciation, remembering and appreciating those who served in our armed forces and made the ultimate sacrifice. In November, we have Veterans Day, a day to thank and acknowledge all who served this country in the military. But this weekend, this Memorial Day weekend, we pause, we remember, and take time to appreciate those who gave their own life while engaged in a mission to protect our way of life. We owe it to the fallen heroes and their families to never forget the true meaning of Memorial Day. Many who died while serving in the armed forces were at the very start of their life. They had plans, dreams, and hopes. They were looking forward to a future filled with friends and family. They were the next police officers, scientists, engineers, and of course, teachers. On Memorial Day, we must remember the families who were never able to see their loved ones fulfill their dreams. Don't forget to let them know that their family member is remembered and truly appreciated. Let them know that the ultimate sacrifice, the price that was paid for our continued freedom, will never be forgotten. President Franklin Roosevelt said, those who, have a long, those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy forget in time that men have died to win them. So this Memorial Day, enjoy the long weekend. Make time to spend with friends and family. Maybe even grab a blanket or a lawn chair and make your way to the big parade on Michigan Avenue. But always remember the true meaning of Memorial Day. Remember the mothers, daughters, sons, and fathers who served our country and gave their life defending our freedom. Thank you, and may God bless our fallen, our veterans, our active military, and this great nation, the United States of America. Thank you, Dr. Maliko. Our next speaker is a Dearborn High alumni and Army National Guard. Please join me in welcoming Dearborn City Councilman Kamal Al Sawafi. Good morning, everyone, and it's great to be back at my old high school. Let's go, Pioneers! It looks just as good as I remember it. I remember the hallways, the cafeteria, and the principal's office, where I was uh, called on many times to uh, continuously discuss my uh, continuous improvement plan. I'll just say that. But seriously, thank you for inviting me to the sacred ceremony. I'm honored to be here with you as we pay tribute to the best of us, American service men and women who gave their lives and made the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf, those whom from we asked everything, and from us they asked only one thing in return, to remember them, to remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our liberty, sacrificed their lives so we may stand here free today, to remember our hometown real life heroes, those who were our close relatives, our friends, our neighbors, and our classmates who sat in the same classrooms and walked the same hallways as you and I, who dared to put on a selfless and sacred uniform and gave their lives in pursuit of an ideal and in service to our country and our community. Let this Memorial Day be a remembrance of how past heroes overcame our enemies. Let their dedication to service serve as an example of how you can take on the fight on today's battlefields. Battlefields that are not in some faraway lands, but rather right here in our own backyards. You might not have the uniform on, but you can take on the fight against poverty, injustice, inequity, 
in the fight for the most vulnerable in our community. Everyone can serve in their own way. Be today's hero by standing up and fighting for what's right, supporting and volunteering at your local nonprofits, and simply being a good neighbor. It's our duty as Americans to live true to our beloved American values, the very same values our fallen soldiers fought and we continue to fight for. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. El Sawafi. In the next portion of our ceremony, current Dearborn High students and alumni will help to honor Dearborn High alumni who have lost their lives in the service of our nation. I would like to call Adam Haig to the podium as he presents fallen hero Walter Blankertz. World War I is also known as the First World War, the Great War, and even the War to End All Wars. Whatever it may be known to you, it is one familiar to all. This fierce conflict engulfed the entire globe, those from every race, ethnicity, and religion enlisted in the fight. It involved 32 countries, it was fought on five continents, and took the lives of nearly 20 million around the world. The impact of such a violent phenomenon created waves that reached even Dearborn, one of our very own pioneers who graduated in the early 1910s, Walter Blankertz, made the ultimate sacrifice for his country and its people. He was the only known World War I veteran from Dearborn to lay down his life in the pursuit of freedom. In the military, he was better known as Sergeant Blankertz of the 120th Machine Gun Battalion. He was tragically killed in action on the 1st of August, 1918, while performing his duties in a counter uh, offensive against the Germans in France. Such a noble service is reserved for the bravest of us all. Men and women like Blankerts are the epitome of American heroes. Every day, these men and women stand guard in anticipation, ready to defend and protect our great country. I briefly spoke to a veteran about Memorial Day, and he said to me, this day isn't about people like me. They got to come back home. Memorial Day is about those who didn't get to come back home. I would now like to welcome Oliver Angel, who will commemorate George Levigood. World War II is widely regarded as the most catastrophic event between our modern day nations. It was the most widespread and deadly war in history, involving over 30 countries, and more than 50 million civilian and military deaths. Our world powers at the time united to and fascism and fight for liberty. With that, they brought their young, brave soldiers, including some from our hometown, Dearborn. As Dearborn residents, we have all heard of Levagood Park. Most, however, do not know where the name Levagood originated from. It came from Dearborn High class of 1935 graduate, George Levagood. George was a star football, basketball, and baseball player. He was also in student council, orchestra, and symphonia club during his time as a pioneer. He attended Michigan State University, where he played baseball and received a Bachelor's of Science in 1939. Still, why is our park named after him? On top of all of his academic and athletic achievements, George also sacrificed his life for this nation. He was the first Dearborn soldier killed in action during World War II. George was killed on April 12, 1942, at the age of 24, during a Japanese bombing raid at Corridor which was a fortress guarding Milan Bay in the Philippines. George Levigood was not only a true American, but a true pioneer. Now I will invite Katie Belair to the stage to honor Howard Ballantyne. On June 25, 1950, the Korean War began when North Korean soldiers poured across the 38th parallel and invaded present-day South Korea. The United Nations, with the United States as the principal force, came to the aid of South Korea. At the time, many feared that this was the first step in a global communist campaign. For this reason, the United States intervened. To support this effort and to combat opposing forces, the United States sent thousands of its people, including Dearborn's very own Howard Ballantyne. 
Howard Ballantyne was a tennis player and a member of the class of 1951 at Dearborn High School. After graduating, he began working at a local supermarket until he was drafted. Private Ballantyne was mortally wounded in Korea on July 7, 1953, while serving as a member of the 45th Infantry Division, U.S. Army. He was laid to rest in Northview Cemetery in Dearborn on September 12, 1953, five days before his 21st birthday. Thank you, Katie. Our last fallen hero being remembered this morning is James Heward. This will be presented by Dearborn High alumni, Mr. Art Garrison. Normally I'm crying by now, but uh, I'm getting along okay so far. But bear with me. My name is Art Garrison. I'm from the class of 1965, and I'm a pioneer, and I just want to say good morning to all you pioneers. All right, I'd also like to thank all the uh, dignitaries up here on the dais, uh, the mayor, and all the rest of the oh, school board, because they're the ones that put this together so that we can all celebrate this uh, momentous holiday as far as I'm concerned. And I've got to thank my DHS liaison team, Christine and Nezreen. Okay, now, uh, it is an honor to be here again, especially when I get to talk about a person. Here I go and a subject that means a lot to me. Uh, I was asked to talk about James Linton Heward. Uh, and then we have nine other uh, veterans who paid the supreme sacrifice we lost here at uh, Dearborn High. All my classmates, so it makes it so hard for me. Uh, Memorial Day is dedicated to all veterans who paid that ultimate sacrifice for their country. This uniform I'm wearing is the uniform of the Dearborn Allied War Veterans Council. It's the ritual team uniform and we provide the final military program to honor all veterans at their time of burial. Their final hand salute the rifle volley or salute, presentation of the flag to the family of the deceased, and finally, taps. It is an honor that I get to do these things with my fellow brothers in arms. Mr. James Linton Heward, United States Air Force, he was a captain, was the only serviceman listed as missing in action after his aircraft was shot down July 12th, 1972. Um, at the age of 27, Jim left behind his wife, Cynthia, three sons, Matthew, Mark, and Daniel. Excuse me. James was a graduate of uh, the January class in 1963. Now back then, uh, way back, uh, we had a January graduating class and a June graduating class. There was uh, so many people going to school that they broke it up for January and June. And I was fortunate enough to know Jim. We grew up in the same neighborhood over by Ford Road and Telegraph. His home was located on the uh, corner of Lawrence and uh, Highland on the southeast corner. 
Uh, let's see. Jim was, to me, strong, kind, brave. He was hardworking. He played basketball here at Dearborn High, and if you go into the uh, library, I'll bet you can find the uh, yearbook from 93. And if I remember correctly, I think his uh, number on the basketball team was number 22. Um, but he had fire in his eyes, and he had a passion for life. He was proud to have served in the United States Air Force. And in 1997, his remains were positively identified, and he was given a full military funeral at Arlington National Cemetery. It took 25 years, but closure came and was finally given to his family and the city who cherished him. Uh, again, as you've heard already, but it can't drive the point home enough. Always remember the price of freedom is never free. We had nine other graduates we lost in Vietnam, and I will name them. James Patterson, James Brock, James Hath, Larry Gambato, Thomas Gentine, James Fleming, David Brannan, Brian Logan, excuse me, Bradley Logan, and David Kovitz. City of Dearborn in Vietnam, we lost a total of 54 men. Etzel Ford lost 23, Fortson lost 18, in Dearborn, we lost 10. Sacred Heart, they lost three. And I'm sure there are more that haven't been accounted for. I, I have to remember this because it's so true to Vietnam veterans. They served, they fought, and they died and received neither their country's glory or their country's compassion. So may this serve as a special tribute for them all. Oh, let's see if I can get my composure back here. All right, Dearborn has a long history of honoring and supporting their veterans from the city's uh, Veteran of the Year honors, the War Memorial in front of the Centennial Library, and of course, our Memorial Day Parade, which is by far the probably the most outstanding parade and longest running parade in the state of Michigan. Dearborn has always respected the sacrifices of those that have served and a little tiny uh, tidbit of information. This year's uh, parade marshal for our Memorial Day Parade uh, 2022 is a Dearborn High School graduate. He graduated in the class of 1981, Army General Joseph Martin. He is a graduate from West Point and currently he is the Vice Chief of Staff of the United States Army. He swam here at Dearborn High School and he also swam for West Point when he was going there. All right, in closing, I want to thank the administration and staff of Dearborn High for giving, having me here again, excuse me. Boy, we can use a light right up here for us old guys. All right, and on Memorial Day, please stop.
remember and thank the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who gave their lives for this country and our freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garrison. I know it wasn't easy to talk about your classmates in such a manner, but I also know that you have a proud granddaughter sitting in our audience who requested to be here at the ceremony. Hope I didn't embarrass her. You did it. You made her proud. In closing, I'd like to say that our gathering here is just one small spark in the flame of pride that burns across the nation in honor of Memorial Day and every day. It's not a lot, but it's one small way that we can honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can live in freedom. Your presence here today is a tribute to all of them. I'd like to thank all of our social studies teachers, all of our pioneer students in the audience, and all of our dignitaries and honored uh, guests. Um, I'd like to thank board members and trustees, Hussein Berry, uh, Mr. Thorpe, and um, uh, Trustee Pet Lichkoff. Um, I'd also like to thank our superintendent, Dr. Maleko and Ms. Faraj for their continuous support and for being here today. I'd also like to thank Mr. Mustanen, who's behind one of the cameras out there, and uh, Eric Chigifri, who's also behind one of the cameras out there. I'd like to thank our council members, uh, Ms. Uh, Herrick, Mr. Al Sawafi, who also spoke and is a pioneer, and Mr. Paris, who thought I didn't know who he was, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Bilal Hamoud, who's running for state representative. Thank you to Mayor Hamoud and um, to Mr. Garrison for being here today. I appreciate all of you um, being here. I'd also like to recognize and thank the individuals who helped make the ceremony a success. I'd like to thank Mr. McCloskey and Ms. Pigowski for preparing our orchestra students, our trumpet player, and our soloist for today's performance. I'd like to thank Mr. Forrester for helping us coordinate speakers. I'd like to thank Mr. Viscomi for his flexibility and allowing us to use the auditorium as we needed and as we prepared for this event. This is his classroom. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Deere for helping with the lights and sound. And I'd like to thank all of our student presenters. Uh, you've made us extremely proud. I'd like to thank ad, um, our administrators, uh, all assistant principals, as well as Ms. Uh, Lori Littner and uh, Christine Raspberry, who helped organize this event. And a huge thank you to the person who organized this entire event and coordinated um, all of our speakers and reached out to everyone. She went to City Hall many days. Um, our administrative intern, Ms. Nisreen Najem. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to call Liliana and Ryan to lead our honored guests and dignitaries to the monument for the second part of the ceremony, which will take place outside near the James Heward Monument. All other students, please remain seated during the recessional, and your teachers will dismiss you by row from the back of the auditorium. Thank you all for coming, and remember that we have refreshments in the lobby. This is a special place. This is a Memorial Day tribute for the mothers. Something that they might have had to go through while their loved one was missing in action. To the unknown soldier, I thank you. I do not know your name, although you were once a mother's son. She must have waited patiently for some word 
from you and your safe return. Your race, politics, and creed, they matter not to me. As you and the women who let you go sacrificed everything for our liberty. Prayer of thanks I say for you and for the mother who lost the son and for the rights that I have that your sacrifice has won. Thank you for your attendance. Jimmy, love you. Thank you, I'll get it. Thanks again, all of you.